really loved Road Rash. Road Rash. Road Rash like three. I mean, you could like take a chain and just whip it around and knock someone off a bike. And I get so into it, I'm like, damn it! Like if, if I ever said damn while I was playing Road Rash, oh, I got banned from playing that for the rest of the night because clearly I was getting way too into it. Mom was like, you gotta chill out, it's just a game. I mean, man, if they only knew what kind of games would come after that. <laughs>I got an NES, I actually had to sneak the NES. My dad forbid me from buying it. So I bought one anyway, and like, he would come home from work till like four or something, so right after school, like, I would play it, my sister would play it, and we'd get in there and, and hook up the Nintendo, and then like, right before he came home, we would like, go hide it again. So you bought, you bought a whole console behind your dad's back? Yes. Yeah. How, how did that happen? <laughs> Well, I had a job, I was like a uh, paper route or whatever. Really wanted to play video games, but he was like hardcore against it. So he was definitely mad. I think he got grounded um, for the deception. My brother, my older brother had a Sega Genesis and I was obsessed with Mortal Kombat. And I was so stoked that he left me his Sega Genesis when he went to college. I opened the box that I knew was the Sega Genesis and he wrapped it for my birthday. And there was all of the games except Mortal Kombat. He's like, mom made me like give it to one of my friends. I was like, no, and I was just devastated. Uh, my first console was the Sears Video Arcade 2. Now what this was, was a licensed by Sears, mm -hmm. but it was basically a Atari 2600. I remember my first video game console was called the Intellivision. I don't know if anyone knows what an Intellivision is, but the only game we had on there was uh, Pong. The first video game I played at home was on my very, very first computer, the, the Radio Shack Tandy TRS-80 color computer, also known as the Trash 80. And that was a game called Dungeons of Daggerath, which is prominently featured in the novel Ready Player One. My first game was Sonic the Hedgehog. This guy. He's so cute. Oof. The thing about the game back then, there was no saving. Like, once you died, you had to start from the beginning. I remember one night, we still couldn't figure it out, but we, we didn't want to give up. So we would pause it, turn the TV off, because you don't want you know, the image to burn into the TV screen. We'd go out to dinner at like a Chili's or something, and then come back and be like, all right, now, really, how are we going to beat this? My first video game was Sonic the Hedgehog for the Genesis, um, purchased accidentally by an uncle who thought it was a computer game at the same time that my parents got me a Genesis, not knowing that it didn't come with games. So it was a very convenient Christmas. First video game, I guess the first video game I remember was a console, Odyssey 2 by Magnavox. Do you remember that? Oh yeah. It had a gunfight game. It was these two cowboys with cactus in the middle. Every time you fired at the, uh, at the cactus, because the cactus would actually ricochet the bullets back. It made the most annoying sound. It was like <laughs> That's actually more recent than, because remember back then you didn't beat games. There was no beating games. The games didn't end. They just went on and on and on. You could flip a game in the arcade. Yeah. Remember you'd get to a certain score in, in Donkey Kong and the board just like, we can't put any more numbers on the screen yeah, so yeah. it's gonna crash or whatever. Um, or it just flips and go back to the same, the first level but it's harder or something like that. I feel like one of the first games I really beat it was Portal. I remember I had a cold. I was like out sick from work with a cold, so I was really into it. There were like crumpled up tissues everywhere. I was like, I'm gonna beat this game. <laughs> Couldn't breathe, but I'm like, this is gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, that was a good memory too. <laughs> Somebody got me to play Max Payne on PC when I was in middle school, and there was story there, and these people actually looked like people. So yeah, I played that game all the way through several times. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I never beat it. I got stuck in Jabu Jabu's belly, which isn't even that far into the game. But I seriously was stuck in it for like weeks and I would get so mad and I'd be like crying. And then I, I just never got out of it. Like it kind of turned me off to video games in general because I was just so bad at them. Banjo-Kazooie. My brother and I had a saved, uh, a saved game that was kind of conjoined. So we would just trade off the controller, um, I accidentally deleted the save game after about a year of playing the game. 
and I hid the cartridge and what feigned complete like innocence and was like, I don't know. I don't know where the cartridge went. About eight years later, he found the cartridge and got super mad. GoldenEye for Nintendo 64, which I played in college a lot. And I never, I mean, we've mostly played multiplayer where we were playing each other, but there was also um, the regular version where you could play different levels. And I could never, I remember there was a certain level that I could never actually get past. And to this day, actually, that does haunt me. It might have been Contra with the, uh, with the Konami code with the 30, with 30 lives. Because it's very hard to do it without that code. And once you did that, I think my brother and I played through Contra. He calls me once a week and he's like, hey, remember that time we beat Contra? And I'm like, yeah, man. Still haven't done anything as cool. I really thought about it. I think Toe Jam and Earl has my heart just because of how cool and funky it is and how wacky these two guys, these two aliens from the planet Funkatron, crash onto planet Earth. It's totally a bummer, but you have to go collect the pieces of their ship while avoiding crazy Earthlings. And so it was just so weird and so creative and artistic that uh, it, I, I, I could still pick it up and play for hours. Skyrim. My all-time favorite game is Skyrim. I will say that again. My all-time favorite game is Skyrim. I'm still playing it on the Switch, by the way. That was my, my entire reason for buying a Nintendo Switch. My favorite video game of all time is the arcade version of Virtua Fighter 2. It was so deep. Like, uh, there's, every character had so many moves. You know, I would always tell people so they would respect, respect me more. It was like, it's like a chess game. It's like a chess match, you know? Wait, but, there's skill in that game? I didn't think there was skill in that game. I just felt like it was just... There's skill in Virtua really? Fighter. But, uh, I can't believe you said that. Seriously, that, that was the whole point is that there was so much skill involved and you had to like train. I remember I would train. Train? I would, I would just, <laughs> when it finally came out in the Saturn, I, I got it. I remember I would just play the hell out of it. And then I went to my friend's house and I would just go through every character and beat them with <laughs> every different character because I was that good. Although I suck compared to real good players, but, but... The guys who do more training. The guys yeah. who did more training, yes. My all-time favorite console is the Dreamcast, which was short-lived, but I had tons of games on that. Um, I used to play Crazy Taxi, Virtual Tennis. Um, there was a surfer game that I used to play all the time. I first got into NBA 2K series on Dreamcast, and all of a sudden they just stopped making them. Yeah, that was my favorite. Game over.